did it not to be tied. Waving my flag like a pirate. 24 7, I'll be wide. 365, I'm alive. Late night, proudly awake. Takes me proudly awake. FaceTime, proudly awake. Rolling, rolling up another place. Late night, proudly awake. Hello, I'm Marjorie Hash and welcome to France 24's weekly music show. My guest this week is an award-winning artist who broke into Australia's hip-hop scene when she was just 16 years old. She's since travelled the globe, released her first album and in 2017 dipped into the world of pop and dance music, collaborating with the likes of Mark Ronson, Charlie XCX, Subtract and France's very own Martin Solveig. This summer she's releasing a new album which has a few R&B melodies but ultimately embraces trap tones and harder hip-hop beats. TK Maidza, thank you so much for joining us this week on France 24. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's a bit crazy because you were in the middle of touring Europe uh, with uh, Princess Nokia when lockdown happened and since then the world's kind of gone a bit crazy, a lot has happened. Uh, how's it been for you? It's been a lot slower in pace but I think there's been a lot for me to do at home, which has been really nice. So I'm very lucky I have a lot of music to, uh, to write and this project that I've been working up to to put out. So, yeah, it's been quiet, but at the most part, I've still had a lot to do. And, um, yeah, it's keeping sane. <laughs> <laughs> well, your new album uh, last year was Weird. Volume 2 <laughs> is a follow-up to a mixtape that you made uh, and a reflection on 2016, which you'd found personally to be a very strange time. Uh, is that the case? Yeah, it was very weird for me because I think everyone goes through that period in their life where it almost gets flipped upside down and you start to realize that um, being responsible is such, like you have to be responsible for a lot of things like money, your family, your friends, and um, just learning consequences and all of those things. So I think that was that moment where I was like, oh, this is, I have to take life a lot more seriously and I can't just, you know, um, have fun all the time. Like I have to um, think about the future and stuff. So yeah, that's what it meant for me. Mm. Now you're 24 now, and you said that you felt much more creatively mm. in control uh, of your work on this album. Do you think um, this could have only happened eight years into your career? Um, I definitely think so because um, when you're young, you're experimenting, you're trying to find out who you are, you're still learning. And I think um, when I first came into the music scene, I was still trying to figure out who I was, but I was lucky enough that I just had a good ear for, you know, pop music, rap music, and just things that I thought were cool. But I think as I've grown up, I've really had to think, what do I want to put out in the world and how do I want to present myself and what, um, yeah, what do I want to add to this world? And that's kind of what I felt like doing with these projects. I just really had to think about um, the music and the message instead of just making songs for the fun of it all the time. Mm. Well, how about we check out one of your tracks, Shook. It's an incredibly infectious mm. tune and it's perfect for the summer. I swerve, um, this is why they even got nerve. Outside, they be looking like squirrel. No time for a hater, I squirrel. Ching, if you got them, tell them I squirrel. Yeah, I got them all shook. Earthquake, yeah, I got them all shook. I came out of play by the book. Yeah, I make the bands, yeah, I got them all shook. These men's looking at me all shook. Talk about it, but they never gonna do it. I came out of play by the book. Yeah, I make the bands, yeah, I got them all shook. Now, you've said of uh, this video, which was shot before lockdown, uh, that the junkyard setting was supposed to represent um, a future where everything had fallen apart. Does it feel a bit strange now to have come up with such a concept? Um, definitely. I didn't expect any of this to happen. And I think when um, I was called and told to go home straight away, I was like, oh my God, it felt like I was... Um, yeah, almost predicting the future in a way because it just feels like it keeps getting crazier and crazier as the months go by. But um, I don't know. Yeah, it was definitely I didn't expect for things to happen the way they did to come kind of come in line with my concept for my project. Mm. And uh, last year was weird is going to be a trilogy. Um, how mm. do you think and, uh, 2020 is going to affect the writing of uh, last year was weird volume three? Um. For most of the projects actually done, like I managed to work a lot before lockdown. I was in LA in December and in January. But um, I think what's happened 
um, throughout the year. It's, it's really made me think again about like, what do I want to put out into the world? What do I want to say? How will this help other people? And how will this help me? So I think it's just helping me look at things more. And um, you were born in Zimbabwe and moved to Australia when you were uh, five years old. And it feels like over the last few years, the world is starting to recognize Aussie rappers who stem from the African diaspora. Um, have you as an artist felt a shift in the attitude and visibility both in Australia and around the world? Um, definitely. Yeah, we're definitely being embraced a lot more. And I think um, the fact that that's happening, it gives like another gateway for others like us and, you know, others um, who want to do what we can do. They give, It encourages other people like us, which is amazing. I think it's a really good time and there's a lot of really good opportunities for Africans in Australia. And I think in the world as well, like it's OK to be different and um, versatile. And I think a lot of these artists, they, you know, you're from Africa, you live in Australia and then you probably listen to grime or American hip hop or, you know, there's so many influences and I think it's a good time to be versatile. And uh, your uncle was Andy Brown, a politically engaged and Zimbabwean artist that you've described as the Bob Marley of, of Zimbabwe in some ways. And I know your father toured with him. Um, how much do you feel your family's musical heritage trickled down into your own music? A lot of Zimbabwean music is very passive. Um, I, I think it's it's mostly in the rhythms and um, what I'm more inclined to um, liking. Like I just like fast paced music. Um, and also now I realize that I like more natural sounds, um, you know, like reggae and so, like soulful music as well as R like R&B. Um, and that's what's really big in Africa. And that's what I grew up listening to. So I think, yeah, I just like fast paced music because African music is very rhythmic and um, soulful. Like I just want to say something now more than ever really. Okay, how about we just uh, take some time to check out some of uh, this week's mm -hmm. other new releases um, and one of America's biggest country artists and vocal marijuana lover, Willie Nelson, is back with a new record entitled First Rose of Spring. Now, as you can imagine, his 70th studio album, yes, that's 70th as in 10 times 7, uh, was actually meant to be released in the spring. If you like horses like me, this video is worth a wait. We are the cowboys the true sons of freedom we are the men who will get the job done we're picking our words so we don't have to eat them we're rounding them up and, and riding them home Willie Nelson there, whose new album includes a cover of Charles Aznavour's Hier Encore. Now fans of the 87-year-old will be delighted to know he's releasing a memoir in September entitled Me and Sister Bobby, True Tales of the Family Band, which he co-wrote with his sister. Uh, now, Tike, um, how, I know you're releasing a uh, fashion brand. Um, have you ever thought about a memoir already? I know you're only 24, but still. <laughs> I actually have had a lot of people ask that I should write about my career so far, but I feel like I still have a lot to do and a lot to figure out first before I write one, but I definitely would love to do one, maybe when I'm 40. <laughs> yeah, something to look forward to, that's great. Um, now over to uh, a yes. British Icelandic trio, Dream Wife, who met at art school in Brighton and started what was initially just a fake girl band as part of a performance project. And now little did they know, but they would go on to release a real album and support the likes of Garbage and The Kill, and they are this week jacking, dropping their second LP, So When You Gonna, which is filled with high energy pop punk that tackles body image and encourages self empowerment.
little clip from Dream Wife there. Now, Tikai Maiza, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to France 24 uh, this week. Uh, your album is out at the end of August. And in the meantime, we can enjoy the new single shoot available uh, online and you can order it also on vinyl, of course. Um, and now coming up in just a few minutes, the latest news on France 24. And do head to France24.com for Encore's latest culture news. And why not connect with us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and so on. We're waiting for you. Uh, we're going to round up this week's show with Niger's Alou Eseni Ani Vola and Ethiopia's Girum Mesmour, who are this week releasing their first collaborative album, Afro Pentatonism, a uh, rallying call for peace in the region of Niger and sung in Anivola's native tongue, Tamashek. <laughs> Ya ta ta ya ta sem sudu 